panelists here, NBC News Washington correspondent, you know, Michelle Sindor, NBC News Capitol Hill correspondent, Ryan Nobles, Lonnie Chen, a fellow at the Hoover Institution, and former Democratic Senator Claire McCaskill. Yamish, uh, when we saw the announcement video from Joe Biden, it was not about what he did. It felt like it is about who he's running against again. And it felt very much almost like a, and they even referenced the first video. He really needs Donald Trump to be the nominee. And Donald Trump responded in this Thursday by sort of focusing on him. Are they in a codependent relationship? There is definitely benefits to having both of those men run against each other in both of their minds. I also think Democrats are really coming to the realization that the culture wars that we talk so much about Republicans um, for waging also is something that Democrats should be robustly talking about because their voters are mobilized by that. The first few minutes of that video were January 6th, abortion, and then you got into book banning. Having talked to voters, Democrats are very worried about their own freedoms um, and really want to wrestle that word back from Republicans. So I think you see Joe Biden in that video making that case Mm -hmm. and making sure that people say, "Okay, you might have done something for the inflation or the bills, but your life is at stake. And I think there's a little bit of of fear, frankly, that's being leaned into there, which we also saw on on the Republican side. Ryan, what's interesting to me is on your beat in Congress, you're already seeing members in each party start to focus on the other. Mm -hmm. Um, Let me put up a list here. Debbie Stabenow. Politically, for us, it's helpful if former President Trump is front and center. John Tester. It's probably better for Biden to have Trump as the nominee. Then you look at the Republicans. Dave Carney, a strategist out of New Hampshire. Hey, Biden is an easy target. Wesley Hunt, a congressman from Texas. Two more years of this. I'm more and more confident every day. It is fascinating that both parties think the other guy is what keeps them. uh, I've covered a number of political campaigns where uh, you set the stage as saying the only person that could beat this candidate is this guy and the only guy that could beat this candidate is the other guy. And it does seem in many ways that that that's what this presidential campaign is shaping up to be. Uh, You know, the polls, you know, the poll that we just conducted this week shows pretty clearly that most Americans don't want to see either of these two guys at the top of the ticket right now. Uh, but we're in a situation where there yeah. aren't clear alternatives. And I think every time you go back to having this conversation of if it's not President Biden, then yeah. who is it? And the same thing with President Trump right now, his stranglehold on the Republican base, which I see every single day, particularly in the House of Representatives, is so strong. The idea that there would be some sort of Republican alternative in a serious way right now, you know, just doesn't appear to be that clear. Claire, if Trump weren't there, would there be more Democratic handwriting? Oh, I don't know. I, I, I don't think so. Um, <laughs> you know, I, would Joe Biden run no matter what? Yes, he would. I mean, inflation's down 40 percent. He's created more jobs than almost any president in the history of our country. He had got the infrastructure bill through that Donald Trump mm-hmm. kept talking about for weeks and weeks on end. So he has accomplishments, and I think he enjoys the job, and I think he would run no matter what. No question But this is the other thing, Chuck, that people forget. This is never a referendum. Mm -hmm. Presidential elections, by the time they run around, is always, well, who do you like slightly better than the two you don't like? So it is a binary choice. And even if it's not Trump, extremism is on the ballot for the Republican Party this time, whether they like it or not. It's a choice, not a referendum. It's a choice, not a referendum. Every re-elect campaign I've covered (laughs) always loves to say that. Exactly. And most of the time this century, Claire's right. that, That has been the case. Lonnie, Trump's focus on Biden right now. I don't sense that the Republican primary electorate is that interested in having a primary. Do you? Uh, It doesn't feel that way right now. It's funny because we're pretty late in the primary cycle, but it still feels early. Right. People will say that. Oh, it's early. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's not. I mean, so the reality of it is, I think the way this field, the way that this contest is shaping up, it's pretty clear people realize there's going to be one ticket against Trump. Trump will be there at the end of the day. The question is who the other person is going to be. And you see that in the interchanges, for example, between Governor Haley and Governor DeSantis. Mm -hmm. Uh, You're seeing a lot of people now starting to go after Ron DeSantis because they perceive, listen, there is an opportunity to be that other voice against Donald Trump when we get to early next year. I guess. But boy, Ron DeSantis, you now have Republicans almost universally now criticizing his handling of the Disney thing. Let me play an array of Republicans critiquing him. I don't think the idea of building a prison next to a place that you bring your family is the best idea. (laughs) I do worry that if this happens too many times, businesses that are thinking about coming to Florida are saying, maybe we don't want to go there. If Disney would like to move their hundreds of thousands of jobs to South Carolina and bring the billions of dollars with them, I'll let them know. I'll be happy to meet them. I don't agree. 
how Disney has handled things, but you don't use the heavy hand of government to punish a business. Ryan, the number two candidate is getting the pylon right now, <laughs> not the front runner. Yeah, it's interesting. I've, I've talked to some DeSantis advisors about this. and I, I, There is a recognition about how he's being pillared right now uh, by not just Republicans, but Democrats as well. And what they keep saying is just wait for him to get in the race. You know, he's obviously amassing a huge war chest right now, both uh, within a super PAC, and he has the ability to raise a lot of wow. money as a candidate himself. Uh, and so they're you know, their feeling is and until he's actually a candidate, we yeah. really shouldn't be overstating the difficulty yeah. that he's having in this early part of the campaign. Yamish, there was a former Florida governor who had so much money that was going to be a huge factor in 2015. <laughs> yeah, How did that work famous out? Famous last name. Too. Yeah. Fame, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that didn't work out very well. And, I, and, and when you look at Ron DeSantis, and I've talked to some conservatives about this, they say going to war to dip with Disney, not only does it look petty and look mm -hmm. small, but you're also going after a huge employer of blue-collar people who are going to be your base voters. So if Disney starts mm -hmm. telling their employees, hey, this is a problem, and here's the person who's making your life hard, it's going to be hard for Ron DeSantis. Is this over before it begins? Lonnie? I know nobody I, wants to say that, but boy, it smells yeah. rough. I, I think a lot of this does change. I mean, it's not about him getting in the race. The question is, these primary contests are always sort of battles of attrition, infrastructure building, all that stuff that doesn't get covered. That's what matters. And so he's got the money to be able yeah. to compete in a way that I think people, people need to pay attention still. I mean, look, the, the last couple yeah. weeks have been uneven. There's no question about it. But that is not what I pay attention to. Claire, Barack Obama was in this position against Hillary Clinton, and they were going, oh, maybe he's not going to get there. Do you see any similarities, or do you think DeSantis is in a different spot? Uh, I think de, uh, you cannot compare DeSantis to mm -hmm. people who have been tested on a national stage, yeah. like Hillary Clinton and Barack Obama. Th this guy's not ready. He, he declared war, and he doesn't even know what victory is against d Mickey Mouse. Give Mickey me a Mouse. break. <laughs> Mickey Mouse. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Follow today's top stories and breaking news by downloading the NBC News app.